Morning again. Uh, welcome to Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. Uh, this is uh, uh, Mother's Day, and we are so blessed uh, uh, to have the mothers. Uh, 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 and there wouldn't be anybody <laughs> on planet Earth without Mom, uh, as the Lord has uh, uh, um, multiplied the Earth uh, through the woman and uh, in, in our mothers. So, so happy Mother's Day. Uh, to each and every one of you, um, and if you if you're if you uh, never had a child, you've been a mother to someone. I promise you, and uh, we we love you for that, and thank you, and we thank God uh, for our wives and and, and our mothers uh, today. Uh, we don't have any women in our scripture today, but if you are reading through the Bible, we certainly began to read uh, 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 the the book of Esther. Uh, what a great book that is, and uh, I uh, you know was reading such and such chapters each day and I, I realized I almost read the whole book. I think I did. I almost read the whole book. Uh, so it was hard to stop in Esther. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, but anyway, we, we love our, 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 uh, our mothers and, 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 our, and the ladies in our lives that uh, have uh, impacted us, uh, those, those godly women. Uh, the Proverbs 31 woman comes to mind. Um, so this morning we're continuing in our uh, series studies of, of God's salvation, and only God saves. Man, man hasn't really, um, it, 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 well, certainly we go and tell the gospel, but God is God that saves. It's just our responsibility to go and tell. Uh, today is, is a, a foundational lesson in that, to go and, and tell the gospel. Um, but uh, this is part three in our study of, of one of the most amazing, high-profile, we might say, salvations in the Bible, that is of uh, the man that they call Saul from Tarsus, uh, who we now know, uh, or, or um, at a certain point in Scripture, uh, we were, began to call him Paul. Saul was just his uh, Hebrew name, and, and Paul was his, uh, was his Roman or Greek name. Um, There's not really any change. It wasn't that God changed his name. It was just, a, it was just a, the, the, the way it was, the name was... A, uh, meant in each language, but that being said, this is part three of a, in the last part of a three-part series of his salvation, and we've learned so much, um, and this is, like I said, a very unique uh, salvation, a revelation directly from Jesus Christ uh, that saved this man and the things that he did through him, so uh, uh, we'll go ahead and pray and uh, ask for God's blessing on it, and uh, we'll be in Acts chapter 9, uh, which is really uh, the story of Paul's conversion and um, and uh, we'll look at verses 19 through 31, and also we're going to be in Galatians, uh, looking at some, some supporting scripture in Galatians chapter 1. So we'll go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings on his word this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for our, our mothers and our grandmothers and, th and those, uh, those precious women that uh, mean so much to us, God. We're so thankful for them, the ones that have, have passed on, and God, those that are in our presence now, and for younger uh, uh, moms, Lord, that are trying to raise children in this uh, uh, in this uh, this wicked, crazy world we live in, Lord. And I, God, I pray for them, God, that you would help them uh, to know these ch children need to be raised in the righteousness of the of the Word of God, and and to come and to know you as as Savior, Lord Jesus. We 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 pray a special blessing on them and protection, God. But we we give you thanks this day for for for, for mothers. God, now I ask you to forgive me of my sins and my wickedness, that my focus might be of nothing but you and, and a desire here to, to, that your spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, uh, would speak through me as unworthy as I am a sinner. Uh, God, that you would uh, allow me to, to have a, a, a clear mindset of nothing but the things of God. And it'd be to your glory and honor in these things. Teach us about your word. Teach us about ourselves, God, and uh, that we'd be a repenting people and and we, we would desire to be more like you, Lord Jesus, and uh, be less of us and more of you. We ask these things in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. So we, we pick up uh, in verse 19 uh, we, uh, this morning. We uh, got a statement I, I wrote down this week that God soundly saved Saul in Damascus. Uh, uh, we've talked about uh, when Jesus appeared to him in the, in the bright light, the in uh, the glory of the of the Lord blinding him, and we we've been mulling over that or studying that for two uh, solid weeks. But he soundly saved Saul there. We know that. Um, but he also there was another salvation we mentioned. But he uh, it really wasn't a salvation, but it was a rescue. 
with it. When he saved Saul, uh, he saved Damascus. <laughs> uh, God did it uh, because remember Saul was coming there to persecute and and uh, to arrest and drag away anybody belonging to the way the Christians there believers. So he saved Saul, and in the process, he saved Damascus. And I, we talked about the prayers that, that probably the believers might have prayed. I'm sure someone prayed. I was just about bet that um, for, for rescue and protection. And the way God did it is always not our way. It's uh, our, His ways are not our ways. Um, but one of the things we, we've talked about in salvation, that whenever someone is saved, and it, this still today will always be uh, until the last person is saved, uh, is that there's a change. There must be a change. There, uh, there has to be a change or either really there's no salvation. Uh, that's, that's repentance. That's what repentance is. I'm moving. I'm, I'm headed one direction. I'm changing. I go somewhere in a different direction. But this takes place. And I don't think anywhere else probably in Scripture would you see such a, a drastic, uh, I wrote down a bunch of words here, a miraculous, drastic, noticeable, unexplainable change in a person uh, then, then here, a, a man coming to arrest Christians, and now he he saved by 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 Jesus, and uh, and 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 he has turned around, uh, and uh, and it's perplexing to people. It's hard to talk, hard to to figure out what happened. We'll speak on that in just a minute. Um, and I don't know, as I said, a, a better example uh, in the scriptures anywhere of of such a, a such a change, a drastic change in this person. Uh, I heard one time with one of my dear uh, teachers at Emmett Grove say something of, of Paul later on as he wrote and wrote most of the New Testament that uh, when you begin to read this man's writings and how God captured him and, and was speaking through him, he said that sometimes you begin to read Paul in his word and you, 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 you have a tendency to worship Paul. <laughs> he, uh, I, I heard this that he uh, is probably one of the greatest Christians to ever live and I, personally I, have, I cannot dispute that whatsoever. Um, and, uh, but we don't compare ourselves to, to, to Paul. Uh, Paul would always compare himself to the, uh, uh, to Jesus and, uh, and, uh, that he, even in all of this, he, he, he was so humble in saying that, he, you know, I haven't obtained it. I haven't reached the top. There's nothing, I have not had to come close. He called himself the chief of all sinners and, uh, as great as he was, but he was an outstanding, uh, um, uh, person very gifted and uh and he was sold out he was just sold out to jesus christ uh, I, I thought i had a thought here about about paul as we think about him and today is that turn that change uh we'll get to in just a second but in the in the parable of the souls jesus would talk about four souls types of souls and they really were four types of hearts in in, in people uh and and out of the four there's only really one one heart that was uh that came to know the lord that knew that was saved uh, that would be the good soul, and uh, and not to go back over that, but but in Matthew thirteen, uh, Jesus would describe that that person uh, as he who hears the word and understands it. He hears the word of God, he understands it, and then he indeed goes and bears fruit. And he talked about hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, and I just had a thought. I said, you know, the hundredfold would be would be a man like Saul. Uh, he bared much fruit, and, uh, and and it poses that question that we were asked. Pastor Tim asked us. I think it was Sunday night. It really is a it really is a a penetrating, offending question in a sense that uh, that you know what are we really doing for the Lord? I mean, are we just going through the motions? Uh, and we might love Him even, and we might, but but what, what, are we using our uh, every bit of our being, all of our heart, soul, and our mind to serve him and to glorify him and to tell others, you know, and we need to, that needs to be a check uh, in our lives. We can get busy doing church, doing church work and doing things. They're good things, but uh, what, what are we really doing for the Lord? Well, this man uh, was the epitome of, of that and the answer to that question. This is, this is a, this is a way to live your life here. So, Let's read uh, the scriptures here in Acts chapter 9. And uh, we're going to begin in, 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 uh, in, let's just begin in 19. And I, my, my scripture has a break there. Uh, but we'll read 19 through 31. And then we'll just, we'll, we'll just look through some of these things. This is a new man. This is a changed man here uh, as Saul begins to, 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 to preach there in Damascus. Uh, and so in 19, it says, and he took food and he was strengthened. This is when he, uh, he got up and he, and Ananias went and he, he regained his eyesight. 
Uh, and um, he got up and he was baptized and he took food and was strengthened. Now, for several days, we continue in verse 19, he was with the disciples. Uh, notice that, several days. With the disciples who were uh, at Damascus. And look at 20. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. That's a fascinating statement there uh, of Scripture. Um, uh, in 21, all uh, those hearing him continued to be amazed. And they were saying, Is this not he who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on this name, th this name, and who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests, and they were baffled. But Saul kept increasing in strength in confounding the Jews who lived at Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. There, that's, a, that's a great verse right there, proving that this Jesus is, is the Christ. Verse 23, when many days had elapsed, the Jews plotted together to do away with him. But their plot became known to Saul, and they were also watching the gate day and night uh, so that they might put him to death. But the disciples, interesting here, took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him into a large basket. Now, 26 is a, is a, is a, is a good skip in time right here. Uh, but, but listen to this. Uh, uh, well, I, let's, we'll speak on that just a minute about that time frame. Uh, when he came to Jerusalem, he's in Damascus. Now, all of a sudden, 26, he's in Jerusalem. He was trying to associate with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and not believing that he was a disciple. Now look at 27. But Barnabas took hold of him. That's interesting there. Took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he, uh, that is Jesus, had talked to him and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. And he was with them moving about freely in Jerusalem, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. Uh, and he was talking and arguing with the Hellenistic Jews, but they were attempting to put him to death. There's that word again, uh, verse 30. But when the brethren learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him away to Tarsus. And listen at 31. Listen at the result. I'm going to write, just say something of, of obedience. When we're obedience, look what God can do with obedience. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoyed peace being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it continued to increase. Beautiful verse there uh, of, of the, 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 the church growing there in Jerusalem, the first church. Okay, so let's, let's just kind of look at this a little bit verse by verse and look at some things right here. I want to point out to you two verses that we began with uh, and this change in Paul. The verses 20 and 22, the things that God, that God was doing through Saul right here. We remember those three days of conviction, right? Remember we said, uh, even Matthew Henry, we talked about his comment, commentary about the, uh, it was three days in the belly of hell. Where, where there was that battle between uh, guilt and grace where, where Saul found himself and, and Jesus helped to uh, sort out his uh, the condition of his soul and, and how bad off he was. Uh, and he, and he, as he said, he soundly saved him, uh, but, but he was convicted by the Holy Spirit and now he understood uh, who Jesus was. Let's remember this because this is something we can do uh, and, 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 and something I would recommend. Matter of fact, I'm going to try to do this in my own prayer life. Remember the question when he first uh, was, was blinded there? And the uh, first thing Saul said was, who are you, Lord? Now, salvation answers the question of who, who the Lord is in relationship to him. We, we need him. Uh, he has something no man has. And that's the righteousness, to, to be able to enter uh, into the presence of God, imputed uh, in, in salvation. It's kind of complicated in a sense, but then it's so simple too. You just believe that he is who he is. Um, but, uh, but this understanding that he knew, uh, uh, God began to reveal in, in Paul that question. I don't think that question is ever really answered. We mentioned it is for salvation. Who are you, Lord? But it's also good every day to the Lord show, show yourself to me. Uh, it's kind of in a roundabout way, the question, who are you, Lord? We know who he is. We know that he's our Savior. We know the things that he did, that he's making intercession for us now. But to be reminded of that 
uh, Lord, who are you? Help me to, to be more like you and be reminded. That's just a great prayer to think of, a great prayer request and help uh, in our daily walk, our daily bread that God gives us each and every day in the, in the prayer. Uh, and so God is, is still answering that question. I think he still does in every believer. He, if we allow him uh, to, you know, time and, and prayer and meditation and reading the scripture, you're going to find out more and more about Jesus. Um, someone said one time that you're going to learn more about God by praying than you are by ever doing anything else. Just praying to God. Uh, if you're in dwell with God's spirit, you, you'll learn more about Jesus than you ever will even reading the scriptures. Now, we need to read the scriptures. We're not ever saying we need one or the other. You need both, and they work. It's interesting how prayer and scripture reading work in a tandem. Um, if I struggle in prayer sometimes, if I can't get going in a sense, I can't clear out the garbage in my mind, just go read a little scripture somewhere uh, and, and then go back, and then go pray. I, I, I do that often. It really is a really a big help to me uh, in, in doing that. So God is revealing this question, Lord, Saul asked the question, Lord, who are you? Well, here it is. And throughout his whole life, God is going to continue to, to remind him who I am. Uh, uh, so let's look at this, 22 and, uh, 20 and 22. It says here that, uh, that uh, in 20, that immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue and saying he is the Son of God. Uh, we see here that there was no, uh, there was no delay uh, 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 there was no hesitation. Um, um, there was. It's interesting here. There was no help from any other uh, uh, apostles, um, and uh, uh, he had no training. Uh, he just immediately went. Basically, it says for several days. We don't know how long that was, or a few days, or a week, or what. He immediately began teaching. Um, and, and, and let's keep in mind right here, if we could. This is so strange to say about 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 Paul. That right now in these scriptures where this is at, he's a baby Christian. <laughs> he's 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 ba he's a baby. He doesn't, you know. We would think most Christians they know that they know the, the need of their soul, but they don't really know much about how to live. Or, uh, you know, that, that just comes in that uh, that word sanctification. That's just your spiritual growth day by day by day. You're growing uh, closer to the Lord. Uh, but he's a baby Christian here. It's kind of funny to even say that about Paul. But there, every Christian has that. Every Christian has a starting point uh, in that change in that repentance. Uh, that we talked about. So here he is. Uh, um, I want to flip over to, to Galatians and get a finger over there because what the many of the things that we're going to talk about this morning uh, in the scripture, Paul gives again in Galatians as he wrote this uh, um, letter, this wonderful, wonderful book of Galatians. is my, uh, my son-in-law Justin's favorite book in the Bible. It is a good one. But in, in Galatians 1.12, uh, we, we see here, um, uh, let's pick up 11. Uh, and, and, and the title heading here is he's writing to the, the church in Galatia is, is defending his ministry. He would say this. Uh, we just this is we mentioned that we were we're talking about what's happening to Saul uh, as he's saved and as his uh, 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 today as his this change that we talked about that we've been jumping ahead and looking at things down down that he's learned from. Well, he he would write this to in Galatia. For I would have you to know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. Uh, for I neither received it from a man, nor was I taught it. But I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ himself, personally. And we know that. We've been studying that. I just wanted you to, to see that he, did, you know, he didn't forget. Uh, he, he did not forget where he received it. So we say, we, we say there was no other apostles there in Damascus. There was no one teaching him about Christ. He got up in a few days and he began uh, to proclaim Jesus. Uh, that is the whole work of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, totally right here. Now let's talk about the Son of God. This is very interesting here because I got to thinking about that. You know, we don't we don't call Jesus Son of God much today as, as we should. Uh, in the in the, the the triune nature of God, God the Father, God the Son. Uh, Jesus called himself uh, the Son of Man. Uh, uh, and man would call him the son of God. And that, uh, I went back and I started thinking about the salvations we've been studying. In, in several of these salvations we studied, when, 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 when it was, was revealed to them uh, uh, their need uh, of righteousness, of Jesus' righteousness, that the son of, uh, son of God uh, is there. Uh, when, um, whenever uh, Jesus asked the, the disciples we studied this, uh, who do who do they say that I am? Uh, you know, and they gave all these answers of prophets and 
Um, and, and, but then he asked the disciples, well, who do you say I am? Who, who do you say? Uh, and that's when Peter stood up and, you know, and said that uh, um, uh, that was over. Let's see where that was. In Matthew 16, 16. Uh, and Peter said that you are the son of, of the living God, the Son of the living God. He, uh, 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 and, and that's interesting, Son of God. How about um, the centurion at the cross, Matthew 27, 54. Remember, he was the, he was the one there that was in charge of the, of, the, of the crucifixion. This old callous Roman soldier there, uh, and after he saw the way, I think the scripture says the way Jesus died, uh, just, just uh, incredible, nature bowed its head, all of the supernatural things that were happening there. And that centurion said, surely this is the son of God. <laughs> he didn't have, he didn't know anything about the, about God, I don't believe. Uh, he was a pure pagan. I can't, I don't see, I don't know that, but I'm just saying that. But it was revealed to him that he was the son of God. How about that? How about the Ethiopian? Um, a matter of fact, you can, you can look right here, almost on the same page in Acts 8, 37. Uh, listen to this, and you know, so when Philip went down, and, and we may study the Ethiopian, I think we are, of his salvation, very interesting there, Philip uh, in the Ethiopian, but in 37, in chapter 8 of Acts, and Philip said, if you believe, he's talking to the Ethiopian, if you believe with all your heart, uh, you may, uh, and he answered, the Ethiopian answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So, Son of God is, uh, is very important, it's important to the Lord, it's important that we know that he is uh, and he came from God, and then he returned to God when he uh, uh, ascended back into heaven. And there he is waiting now to come again. And he's coming back, folks. He is coming back. Uh, he, he's coming. <laughs> there's, a, there's a new song out on the radio. This, uh, it is nothing but praise and worship that he is coming back. And, uh, and we believe that, and we look forward to that. Um, uh, so interesting, the Son of God, and now... Uh, here, this 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 Saul, this persecutor, he knows that, and he's proclaiming. It says in twenty two that, but Saul kept increasing in strength there, and he was confounding the Jews. You know, what confounding. I looked it up, and it's like he he was. Uh, uh, and by the way, he went right back into the synagogue. He went kind of right back, and this is a the nature of 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 of, of, of Saul or Paul. Uh, he he kind of just went right into the hornet's nest, you might say. Because uh, he went right into the Jews, those that 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 thought that the way was a was some kind of heresy or sect uh, that was that that um, you know was was an abomination to God or a uh, you know a, a false uh, religion uh, in a sense. Uh, but he's going right back to those people, back to the Judaizers, uh, and, and he's proclaiming this. It says that he kept increasing in strength there in the church. That's really the Jewish church, the synagogue. And it, by the way, it says synagogues. Didn't it doesn't? I, I'm I'm implying, or God's implying right here. He didn't just go to one synagogue. He went to all of them. <laughs> he was hitting them all up. He wanted everybody to know. We know that was in was in Saul's heart. I'm telling you, every time we talk about these things, we need to compare kind of ourselves to 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 to, to the footsteps of of the way Paul went out. Um, and uh, and that's a big, some really huge shoes to fill there, as we might say. Uh, but going into those synagogues. He was confounding uh, the Jews there, which means he was throwing them into confusion. They did not, the whole town was confused in a sense that, number one, this man that came to persecute now is preaching. Uh, and, and then the Jews are, are, are the same way. He, was, he came in as our man, uh, as, as, as uh, someone we were cheering on, and now he's turned all of a sudden. Uh, Matthew Henry was talking about turncoat, you know, from, this, from way back in the, revolution, in the Revolutionary War. Uh, those that, that that jump sides, jump ship, and uh, no better example here uh, of of uh, of Saul. He was confusing them almost in the sense uh, of 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 the way he was proclaiming uh, Jesus that he's that this Jesus is the the Christ. He is Messiah. Um, says that he was proving that this Jesus is Christ. That means that, that to me, uh, and I believe this, that, that they, they couldn't refute him. They, they, could, they couldn't find any fault. You know, when, when they stoned Stephen, Stephen gave this great, great, might as well say it was a sermon. And, uh, and it says that, that um, they were cut to the quick. Um, in fact, it, um, I think we can just, I didn't mark this, but uh, in 54 of Acts chapter 7, now when they heard this, all that Stephen said, they were cut to the quick. 
uh, they they just could not they couldn't refute him. There was nothing that that, that they could say. I mean, it was just the truth, and uh, and it uh, it it silenced them, and uh, and it offended them. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, but but listen to me. Saul was and God's spirit was was kept increasing in strength and folks. That's to where we need to be heading all the time in our walk. We don't need to be. Uh, lagging behind, we, we need to be keeping up with the Lord. We don't need to get ahead of Him, but we need to be right with Him. And in your daily Bible reading and your prayer will keep you right where you need to be. So this is just interesting here in Damascus uh, that these things. Um, now let's look at the, the people's reaction. We see what Paul was doing here in the boldness, but what about the reaction to the people around around him in Damascus? Uh, in verse 21, and all those hearing him continued to be amazed. They were amazed. It says continued, like they, they just couldn't get over it. Like, what what happened here? Who 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 is this man? Let me tell you something. There, if anybody uh, knew you before you were saved and you had you had some sort of, and there's some great stories of salvation, and some are, are, are as we said, are not so, you know, it could have been a gradual thing. It could have been something that happened over time as a young man and you, you didn't have a, a Damascus Road experience, but there are a lot of people that did, and they they had a they had a bad past. You can even be in a back, backslidden in our Bible study, men's Bible study. We're talking about you know kind of backsliding, falling away. Not not that you weren't ever saved, but that you just had a time. That's my my story, you know. And 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 uh, you know, praise God. Now I think I'm, uh, and I, I I don't ever want to sound like we're keeping score with anything, but but my walk is getting back to the point of where. You know, my time is a is is doing the things of the Gentile uh, and then trying to walk righteous. That doesn't mean I'm perfect, and no one is. But 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 striving to be obedient. That that I think I've evened up. Cause I mean, it was like twenty something years or more, twenty five years that I just did what I wanted to do, and I was saved. Um, and uh, you know, now nearing almost sixty years of age this year. Praise God that uh that that I've been walking, uh, trying to walk, and uh and being you know as diligent about it. Uh, uh, that my time is kind of equaled out. Uh, my, my dissipation, times of dissipation is, a, uh, and, uh, and I look forward to that because I just want to, you know, I just want to, I just want to live for the Lord. I did it, I did it a long time my way. And I just, when I got turned around finally, uh, and got straightened back out, uh, and, and it kind of, you know, it's not kind of repented. I repented, uh, that I just wanted to live for the Lord and the rest of my days I wanted to live for the Lord. And thank God he's given me grace to do that. So, so um, it's unexplainable, and uh, we're going to talk about it in just a minute. They were amazed; they couldn't, they just couldn't get over this of what had happened to this man. Um, and, and the question is, is, is it the same man? And we could say yes and no. And you say, what do you mean? Well, uh, yes, it was still the same man physically. It was him that, uh, but he inside, his, his internally, he was totally different spiritually speaking. Uh, uh, I, I got, I've always I've written this thought down several times uh, that some unbelievers, people that, that try to explain away God um, that he's not there, you know, they, they can come up with all kind of excuses and, and reasons and it's these ideologies that mean nothing really, uh, the thoughts of man. But nobody, you know, do we, somehow or another folks can kind of think they've explained away God but nobody can explain a change in someone that is that is, that is uh, divinely saved. They can't explain that before or after change. It's just just they can't comprehend it, uh, and it's unexplainable. And that that's that's why it's supernatural by God. Um, Peter would write over in First Peter four four. I love this because this is kind of my story. That Peter would write. And he was writing about the persecuted persecution of the of of, of Christians uh, that. Uh, that when we make that change and when we when we do turn away, that those that we hung out with, uh, that they're surprised that we don't that, that, that we don't run with them anymore. We don't do the things they used to do anymore. It's a separation, and that's exactly what had happened right here. We see they saw this man in Damascus. Uh, uh, you know, Damascus thought he was coming. Uh, the Jews were coming. Yeah, he, here's our man coming into town to. To, to arrest everybody and, and, the, and the ones the Christians there were scared to death because they were coming to, to get arrested and God just flipped flipped everything around on them uh, and so they were they were just amazed at what was happening right here uh, and by the way that change I'm telling you that change is not for any man's glory any man child woman uh, but it is for the glory of God let me let me let's go back over to uh, Galatians just a minute let me show you that scripture uh, it's funny I 
it was a, it was the God gave me that the thought and I wrote it down and then I was over there reading in first uh, uh, first Galatians and uh, and there there the verse was look at look at verse twenty three and four the last two verses in ch chapter one of Galatians. And Paul is writing about, and he's still giving his testimony, basically, but only they kept hearing. This is what the people were saying about him. He who once persecuted us, this is the, excuse me, what the people were saying about him. He who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith, uh, uh, which he once tried to destroy. Let's talk about Paul. He, was, he came here, he's, now he's preaching the faith. And listen to this, what Paul said. And they were glorifying God because of me. Now, they weren't glorifying God because of, of Saul the man, Paul the man. They were glorifying God because this man was a completely different. So this change is for God's glory. It always has been. Interesting verse there uh, of glorifying the God, uh, of glorifying God of, the, of salvation. So let's look at verse 23. And we mentioned here, uh, uh, I said in 26, I really got ahead of myself, it was really in 23. Uh, most Bible scholars believe that between 22 and 23, that quite possibly about three years had, had expired right here. Now remember, this is the beginning of Paul's ministry. And really, this what we're talking about today is about the first three years of this great uh, um, life of Paul that he, that he led as uh, a baby Christian. I wouldn't call him a baby Christian after three years. I'm quite certain God has spoken to him. Um, and remember we said the other day when he went into those three days of meditation or into uh, when he was meditating for sure and he was praying while he was waiting on Ananias to come to him um, that uh, that might have been the first time that Paul ever prayed really really prayed I mean because God's spirit was speaking to him and all of the other chantings and the things that he did as a as a Pharisee was, was you know the, was so ritualistic probably had uh, quite certain had the Holy Spirit of God had nothing remember what Jesus said about the uh, about the, the the Pharisee that went in to pray with the publican, remember, and he said he was Jesus said he was in there praying to himself. <laughs> he wasn't praying to God. Uh, he he was praying to himself. I, I love that verse with Jesus. And I'm gonna tell you, you can have some re feeble prayers sometimes when you're not when you're not ready to pray and you're not uh, uh, like you should be. Uh, uh, that you can sometimes just pray to yourself. That's that garbage I was telling you about all ago. But 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 thinking about that, thinking about Saul really beginning to to, to pray here. Uh, uh, in those uh, uh, verses uh, that now, three years later, he had a much better understanding uh, of the Lord and his work uh, in 23. So three years, that was the whole point of that, of mentioning that in 23. Uh, and and the, the little heading I had right here, and this is, this is my story, that when God changes your heart, he changes your friends. Uh, sometimes old friends become an enemy, uh, uh, again, back over in First Peter four four, when he was talking about the, uh, let me get, let me just go back over there. I, I don't have that mark, but I seem to have good fingers to to get over in that area of the Bible for some reason. Uh, but in um, but in First Peter uh, uh, four four, uh, and he's and he's talking about the, those that that got turned around and, and got saved. That that uh, he says in all of this, they are surprised. We, we've already read this. They are, they're surprised. These are the people you used to run with, your old friends, uh, that you do not run with them in the same excesses of, of dissipation. And listen to the end of that verse. And they malign you, meaning they turn on you. Your, your old friends, uh, the way you used to live, they turn on you. That means they begin to speak evil of you. It's very interesting here. Uh, you know why? Uh, and and uh, it's interesting that... Uh, I think it was Irwin Luther the other day. I was listening to a sermon uh, that uh, that Pilate, uh, when when Jesus was was uh, was going through all of his trials right before his crucifixion, uh, said something to the fact that the uh, that the that the Jewish religious leaders were that they were just jealous of Jesus. <clears throat> he he just called them out. He he saw it. He wasn't even a godly man, but he saw that they were that they just envied. I think it was envy. They just envied him, uh, meaning that he was so perfect. <laughs> It, and he had such power in his words uh, of speaking and wisdom that, that they didn't like it. Uh, they were they were put to shame is what it was. Uh, and that's what it does, what the gospel does, uh, what the Holy Spirit does. It exposes people, and it makes them look bad. It does. Remember, Pastor Jim keeps telling us now that the Bible's the most uh, offensive book ever written. Uh, and uh, you must understand what that means, but... Uh, but it offends us because we we don't live and our fleshly nature is against it. Remember the, the spirit, 
the spirit of God in us in our flesh or, or, or at battle. There's, there's a clash there, and you, it, when you really know you're saved, you be, you begin to experience that 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 internal battle that's there. And uh, as we said, it's it's what you feed. If you're feeding the Holy Spirit of God, you're going to have a much uh, better walk and more glory to God and much more peace in your heart. If you're feeding the flesh, uh, you know, Paul would even say it's death when you do that. You, you're, you're killing yourself spiritually. And we know these things. So th these old friends, just the point here, and we see in, in 23, many days have, could, had passed by and the Jews, had, uh, they were plotting to, to put him to death here. Um, and uh, it's believed that he might have left Damascus and went out and in north of, of in that area and um and, and maybe preached and he came back into Damascus here uh returned back and uh and he's there uh, uh and the Jews were after him to, to get him and um and so uh in come these new friends we, we just mentioned that when you when God changes new friends um and so uh uh, they, they were plotting to, to put him to death. And it says that the disciples, in verse 25, here it is, all of a sudden, it's, it's been three years, we just mentioned that, but his disciples took him by night. Funny, they, they would nobody would have rescued Saul uh, when he came in, when he was over like in, in chapter 9, verse 3, as he was entering Damascus. Uh, now here they are. Listen, we got a change man. We got new friends, Christian friends. And here they are. They, 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 they learned about it. Uh, Saul knew about it and obviously told them that he had heard that they were getting out to get him. So at night, they lowered him down in a basket. Uh, and and he, he was a night rescue, you might say. God did it. And these new friends that God uh, had sent him, um, uh, they cleverly, uh, uh, they were looking for him, it says, day and night. I mean, they had eyes out looking for him. And they, and they rescued him through God's help. Uh, and, and he and he got out of that city uh, without any harm, any danger. Uh, I wrote, I wrote, uh, you know, one of the things I was going to say a while ago about my friends is those friends I was running with uh, that Peter talked about in First Peter. And I, this is a testimony I give over and over and over and over, and maybe I hopefully I always will in four four that they don't understand you don't run with them. And and when I just quit my that lifestyle, that party lifestyle, or that. Um, just just hanging out with with the good old boys, and they were they really were good guys. They weren't, uh, but but you know it was the it was the bad jokes and the, the drinking and the you know just not not good things, not good things at all. Um, and um, and I I as I was partially blinded in those days, I didn't think it was any harm, you know, to go have fun. But just when the Holy Spirit began to to take me back over, and I allowed Him to do that, uh, those things began to pierce my heart. But those friends couldn't figure me out, and they they, they still liked me, and I'm, it was never any. They didn't malign me in any way, at least I don't think. Uh, but they just they were confused. But I, so I, I I wrote down some thoughts right here about who are your real friends, who are your friends. I I, I heard a, a a pastor say one time that the real friends you have are the ones who walk in while everybody else is walking out. I mean, when you're down and out and you need you need help, they're the ones that's really gonna come in. And, and, and so I can keep, continue that thought with some, uh, that the best of our friends are friends who truly love the Lord. And that is one thing I can say. And it hurt me. It hurt my heart when I had to walk away from those friends. And I had to do it. You understand me? I had to. I had to break away and get away. And there's many, many people have this testimony. That I'm, I'm, I'm different now. Uh, and uh, and if I want to live for the Lord, I've got to get rid of some things. And I had to get rid of some friends. Um and, and so the best of friends uh, are the ones who love the Lord. The best of friends are, are my friends who pray. The best of my friends are those who read the Word of God. Warren, Warren Wiersbe said one time, and I, even, I think I just I recall this Monday night at, at, at men's Bible study, that Warren Wiersbe said this. He said, your best friends are friends who know the Bible. They can get you, help you get straightened out. you got to... You got a, an issue that's up, and they give you that perfect verse, or they know, and they give you that godly advice. Uh, our best friends are the ones who really know who's in control. That is God, and our best friends are our Christians, our our, our, our fellow believers, sisters and brothers in Christ. And and I th and I just thought about those friends that I walked away, and it hurt me to have to leave them. It really did. It kind of it was heartbreaking to do that, and it took a lot of discipline uh, to do it. Uh, but man, I got some of the best friends I have. I have never had friends like I got now at Emmett Grove. I, I could just, uh, I thought earlier as, as I was praying and meditating that I could just, I could spend a whole 
two or three Sunday school lessons of, of thankful of my brothers uh, and sisters and the, the women there at Emmett Grove that g greatly um, uh, helped me uh, in my walk. And I just like to be a man. One of the things I just love about going to church is just getting out of the world and getting in with a bunch of believers and not forsaking the gathering ourselves together. Uh, that is so, so uh, important. Uh, it is to me and it is. It's biblical. Uh, but new friends, and here they are rescuing. Now this is oh, this is amazing, and I know we we are, are getting down uh, in our, in close to our time. But but what is really fascinates me about Saul here, Paul? I want to start calling him Paul. He's still Saul in the scriptures here. But like we said, there was no major thing about his name. It wasn't a change in name. It was just the two different uh, names of his Jewish name versus his uh, his Greek name, Roman name. Uh, is what he does in 26. He he's he's threatened his life, and this is this is this is Paul's pattern throughout his whole life. Uh, that he 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 flees in a sense, or he's rescued here in Damascus. The very next verse, when he came to Jerusalem, I wrote down here from the frying pan into the fire. He he leaves he leaves one confrontation of of, of death of a death threat right back into the you talk about going into the heart uh, in, uh, uh, into the fire here in Jerusalem where he, where he left and as far as we know the first time he's returned to from where he left and became a new man uh, he's coming back and he is coming back uh, he's coming back uh, as we're about to read is a is a confusing people because this man left a uh, he left a persecutor now he, now he's a preacher what? Uh, and uh, and he's coming right back into the the, the 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 center of Judaism there, the church, the, the synagogues of the Jews uh, who were after him. Uh, and he goes right back in, you know. And he did the same identical thing that uh, remember when he went through Leicester and one of the minister uh, minister, uh, missionary uh, missions, and they stoned him. Remember, and they drug him outside of town, and the disciples were standing around there. That's in Acts fourteen, or right about verse twenty. And they were just standing there looking at him, and I, I, I believe they thought he was dead. I mean, he's just laying there uh, lifeless, and it said, the scripture says in 1420, he got up. He just got up. Uh, he'd been stoned, folks. Oh, that's, that's, that's a cruel way to die. Um, but he got up, and you know what he did? He didn't go the other way. He didn't, like, go run and try to get away. He went right back into the town where they stoned him. Um, amazing. His perseverance was... Uh, of hardly anyone we know of, the, uh, uh, but he went right back in town, and here he here he goes straight to Jerusalem. Unbelievable, uh, and it's interesting where he goes. Remember, new friends, uh, uh, new heart, new man, new friends, old friends out. He goes. Where does he go? Verse twenty six. He came to Jerusalem. He was trying to associate with the disciples. He went there. He didn't go. He didn't go back to the Pharisees. He didn't go back to the priests and say, "Look, look." He didn't try to explain anything. That they were behind him now, and he was he was moving ahead. Remember, he's about three years into being a Christian here, and he goes to the to the disciples, and that is who he wants to associate with. Kind of what we said just a while ago, even in my testimony, that is our desire to be with the with the brothers and sisters. Um, and it says there that they were all afraid of him. Uh, they they couldn't understand it. They uh, it was it was confusing. Uh, and, and quite frankly, they just didn't trust him. Uh, I read where some commentary where they said they, uh, some might have thought that he was a spy or some thought he might, maybe he was going to be one of those tares. Remember the wheat and the tares? He was going to be one of those that kind of snuck into the church and then he was going to infiltrate it and, and uh, you know, a, a tactic. Uh, you know, even our law enforcement uh, do that. They, they pose as drug dealers and go in and try to get inside uh, and, and that's kind of what they're thinking was here. And they, they, they were very confused, the disciples, the believers there uh, of this man. Uh, but there they're again, here, here, here God is with these new friends. And this man, Barnabas, is very fascinating, Barnabas, uh, that uh, God sends this Barnabas. Uh, that uh, If you go back into Acts 4, uh, Bar Bar uh, Barnabas real quick, he's first mentioned in Scripture in Acts 4.36. His real name was Joseph. Uh, I don't. I, I know I read that before, but I just and he was a Levite. Uh, I, I didn't know that. You know, begin to read the Old Testament second time through now, and reading about the, uh, all the genealogies, and that's some that's some uh, that, that's some hard stuff to read, isn't it? When you're the son of so and so and so and so, 
Uh, and uh, but it's just it's just entering the detail of scripture to me. It's just mind boggling that they kept up with all of this. But but being a Levite, uh, it, it was interesting uh, that, that that's who Barnabas was. And the, it says there that the apostles renamed him uh, Barnabas because he was such an encourager. That's what Barnabas means. That he was a it means son of encouragement. And, and boy, don't we need those. Uh, you think about your new friends, and that some of those are encouragers, and they are gifted people, I'm telling you. Um, they, they, don't, uh, they don't let things get them down, and they don't, they don't want you to be down. Uh, and, and boy, we could just use a, 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 a trailer load of, of encouragers in this walk today. And the young people certainly need them. Uh, and so encouragement says that Barnabas took hold of him. I like that. I don't know what that really what that means, but... It, uh, it's it's like he grabbed him by the arm and he said, "You come come with me." And he he uh, that was bold too for Barnabas. You think about that uh, to do what he said. And he says he brought him to the apostles. Uh, that's interesting there too about that. Just a, just a little side note. Uh, back to Galatians um, uh, chapter one verse nineteen. Uh, Paul's going to give a little testimony about that. That's very interesting right here. Um, and here it is. It's really just what we're talking about. In, in uh, Galatians 1, 18, here's Paul again, and that's just that same text. Uh, he said, Then three years later I went up to Jerusalem, that's where we're at in Scripture today, and became acquainted with Cephas, that, that was Peter, and I stayed with him 15 days. <laughs> I love the numbers in the Bible. Uh, but listen to what he said in 19. But I did not see any other apostles except James, uh, the Lord's brother. So we, we see here that even though Barnabas brought him to the to the apostles. It was not all of them, apparently. It was just Peter, uh, and uh, who was kind of the, 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 he was the voice uh, of the church. We know that. Uh, and, and James there, uh, you know, he was uh, the head of the first church, the, the Lord's brother. Uh, and so here, here we have that there. Uh, two disciples, only two, but there Barnabas brings them to him. New friends helping him out and, and, and getting him associated and introduced because uh, now, whether whether Barnabas saw these things that Saul had done in Damascus, we don't because remember there were no apostles there. We don't know what happened over that three year period, but certainly he had heard it, and so Barnabas uh, it, it testifies here for him that he had uh, about Jesus had spoken to him on the road, and that he was spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Uh, and then in verse twenty eight, we see here uh, is is is, is uh, Paul continues to grow in strength, and it says here in verses twenty eight that he was with them. Uh, that is that is uh, Saul moving about freely um, uh, about in Jerusalem, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. He was going wherever he wanted to, where whenever he wanted to, with the help of God, speaking out boldly in the name of the Lord. And it he says here in verse 29, and he was talking and arguing. Um, there again, he was there, there, just like he was doing in Damascus. He was confronting them and proving to them that, that Jesus was the Christ. He was the Messiah. Uh, and he was arguing with the Hellenistic Jews. That was that, that Greek, uh, the, 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 um, uh, those uh, Greeks that were, that were born outside of Judea, uh, the Hellenistic Jews that spoke his language. That's what he was a Greek speaker, uh, as they say. Uh, he, he knew Hebrew. He did. Uh, Paul did. But, but that was his language. Uh, and he was speaking with them, trying again, persuading them that Jesus was who he said he was, that he was Christ. And here it is immediately. It says in 29, but they were attempting to put him to death. The enemy never rests. By the way, talking about that, you, you know you're going to be, you know you're working for the Lord, and you probably know that your heart's in the right place when the enemy attacks. I, we, we had the same st thought uh, among a couple of men here. I think it was Sunday we were talking that, you know, if, if, the, if the, the old devil's just leaving you alone and you're not having any kind of, uh, any kind of trials or temptations whatsoever are, are very minimal. You're probably not doing much for the Lord, but you get active in His work, and uh, and He won't stay idle very long, and you'll know it. And it's and it's tough, man. It really is. Uh, um, Sister Donna Richardson just speaks about that all the time. You know, the closer you try to get to God, the more the devil just is, is knocking on your door, trying to trying to mess you up. And but that's a really good sign in a sense. It's not pleasurable at all. But but to know but uh, and so here it is. Paul's doing he, he's uh, you know God's working and Satan is countering and that's a, that always is a is a, is a good sign for for 
uh, you know, for where if you're living for the Lord, that's going to take place, and that's that's a good thing to to think about it. It's just we never really think about it when when it becomes such a a burden. It, you know, really, it just helps us to rely on the Lord because you ain't going to defeat the the devil yourself. Um, and so again, they rescued him from danger in thirty. Uh, they they got him out of, of town there and took him away. It says and and brought him back down to Caesarea, that, down to the uh, shore. And most likely, we don't know. They sent him away to Tarsus. Probably got on a boat and sailed along the the western side of the the, the eastern side of the Mediterranean up to Tarsus, which. Look, was back at his hometown again. There he is. And he's really back in the same area. He's really kind of gone full, full circle. And it's very fascinating. That little circle right there could have been a, you could have called that a little missionary journey. He would now end up having three missionary journeys where he would go through, a, a you know, over the next 30 something years of his life uh, doing that. But the pattern uh, of returning, and he goes back, and I tell you this beautiful story, it continues on at Antioch. Um, and uh, we got just a minute. Let's, let me just turn over there. Uh, it's, it's really just a few pages over in, in chapter 11 of, uh, uh, in, in about verse 19, the church in Antioch. And I, and I want to read all of this, but this is just, just amazing how God was growing him, uh, uh, sent him back. And, and so the, the church in Antioch was growing and, uh, and uh, uh, a very interesting uh, verse that the first uh, Christians uh, the first that were to, 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 that were called Christians were in Antioch. That means little Christ. Uh, but uh, the church was 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 growing there, um, and uh, um, we, we matter of fact, we quoted nineteen of of the dispersion of the Christians when they when they stoned Stephen. That's in nineteen. But listen to what it says right here uh, of this Barnabas and, and Saul again, and they're going to go. They're going to end up being a, 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 a duo uh, for the for the gospel. Uh, in 22, it says the news about them reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, what was happening in Antioch. And they sent Barnabas, here he is, off to Antioch. And when he arrived and he witnessed the grace of God, he rejoiced him again to encourage, there he is, Barnabas the encourager, uh, them with all resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit of faith. That's about Barnabas. And considerable numbers were brought to the Lord. Now listen to what he says right here. And he left for Tarsus. Remember, and Paul, they right here, but they just sent him back to Tarsus. And who was down there? Barnabas. Who brought him to the disciples? Barnabas. He knew these things. And he left for Tarsus to look for Saul. He went back again. He said, look, this place needs a man like, like Saul. And God knew, uh, gave insight to, to Barnabas of who that was. And so he left. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. In other words, Barnabas went and got him and brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable numbers and the disciples that were first called Christians in Antioch. What a beautiful story in Acts 19 through 30. Of, of That's a continuation of the story that we kind of jumped ahead in time right there uh, of, of Saul of being faithful. Now let, let's just read this last verse. 31 is really, a, I love this verse. Good, good verse to close. So the church throughout all Judea, that is, that is in Jerusalem and surrounding, in Galilee, that's a little bit northwest where Jesus' ministry was, and in Samaria. So we're looking at basically all the Holy Land right here that the church enjoyed peace finally. Remember what God did? He took an enemy and made him a friend. He took Saul the enemy and made him a friend and made him a, 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 a the spokesperson for the gospel, uh, first to the Jew and, then, and eventually to just the Gentiles. Being built up and going on in the fear of the Lord, that means they... they, they 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 revered the Lord, uh, wasn't scared fear. It was just honor to Him, uh, in the in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus said that the Comforter must come. I don't think I don't think the disciples ever understood that when He said that just before His crucifixion. I got to go away because if I don't go away, the Comforter won't come. They're like probably in their minds thinking, what what Jesus? What are you talking about comfort? Well, th that's what He does. He when when you're obedient. Uh, and living right, you were comforted. You have, and here it is. They were comforted. They had peace, and they continued to increase. The church was growing, and Paul, uh, what was 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 monumental in this through what, how God saved, uh, uh, you know, Saul. He saved Damascus, and 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 listen, when he took Saul out of Jerusalem, um, and you can't get away from that verse. The old Saul breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord against believers. 
when he was removed, there was a there was a peace there. This man was fierce, evidently, but his now his zeal and his fierceness was for the Lord, and uh, and we know that he goes on to write most of the New Testament. What a beautiful story of a salvation! If we could even just come uh, just anywhere close to to living our life like Paul did for for Jesus, uh, in in these verses that that God gave him, uh, just just amazing. And God can save anybody, folks. He takes him. He takes a starch enemy and turns him into the into the. His, I'm just going to say it. One of the greatest Christians to ever live, uh, and certainly never gave up on Christ even to his death, uh, and and was martyred there in Rome. Very fascinating story. Salvation is fascinating. It really is. I hope you know the Lord. I hope you have a desire to live more for Him. And those that don't know Him, I pray today that you would consider these things that uh, you might not think you're changeable. You might not think you're, quote, savable, but I'm telling you, you are uh, in the sight of the Lord and never give up. And never give up praying, folks, for, for, for the, how many mothers on this Mother Day we think about the, the, the prayers of, of uh, Jabez. Remember that? We had a Mother's Day sermon last year. I still got it in my Bible. My, my, my granddaughter was about to be born. Uh, or, uh, we found out that uh, or the news got out. Uh, uh, we could give the news out that my daughter was pregnant. By the way, she's with me this weekend right now. Uh, but uh, the prayers of those mothers that prayed, and uh, and who knows, somebody might have prayed for Paul when he was a little baby, and uh, and look what God did. Uh, but God can change anybody, and uh, those that uh, that uh, that don't know the Lord, I pray that would be His will in your life. So we we thank Him, we thank Him for the story of Paul, we thank for all the good things. But Paul was obedient, and I, I wrote down here somewhere that I probably didn't say that God always rewards obedience in His own way. Here, the church prospered. Uh, but obedience is key in everything. It really is. Um, and, and, and one of the main signs of your salvation, there's a change in your obedient, uh, from disobedience to obedience. God, we just thank you this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the moms out there. Thank you for my mother, Lord. And uh, God, uh, just, just thank you. Just thankful for grace and mercy being born into a, a Christian home. But God, there's so many that, that didn't have a loving mom like mine that, that made me go to church and and uh, I, things that I didn't want to do, I had. I was so ignorant, didn't know what I needed. And uh, I, even as adults, we don't even know that sometimes. But to have a godly mother, I'm so thankful and, and praise you. And God, I pray for moms today that might not even know you, but that you might save them. And uh, God, the whole family might be changed. I pray for the, the men also, God, but the women. We just give thanks, our moms, our grandmothers, and those women that highly have, have uh, had a big influence on our lives. Uh, we think of... Um, uh, Timothy, you can think about him and his mom and grandmother, Lord, that uh, that, that loved him and, uh, and and kept him nourished in the Word. So, Lord, thank you for your Word. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for this story, great story of salvation, God. We love you this morning. We like, we just thank you, Jesus, for making a way. Uh, thank you for the Scriptures. For if you had not have come, had not have gone to the cross, had not have died for for me and and, and many others, uh, many other saints, had not arisen and had not. Uh, uh, walked on earth 40 days and then ascended to the Father, we would not have a text to read today. We, we might not even have uh, uh, Saul to write one word. And so, Lord, for that, we give thanks. And we ask these things and give these praises in the name of Jesus. Amen.